Hello, good day to you all. Uh, we now have a session uh, uh, about experience with open cast captioning and scalability. Um, presenter is uh, Carlos, and later on, Corne will also present. So, uh, Carlos, um, you're good to go. Uh, if you have any questions, please enter them in the shared notes. Um, then we can answer them. Um, and um, you can, uh, if the presenter asks, you can use your mic if you want. So, good luck. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. <clears throat> okay, so I'm Carlos Turro from Universidad Politecnica of Valencia. And at some side, yeah, on the left, it's Corne from Cape Town. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, we are going to talk about our experience in, in this year with, with OpenCast. So we'll talk for 10 minutes each other, and then we have some time for, for questions. So yeah, moving in. Well, basically, I want to, to present about how we scale up our recordings this year. And maybe, Cornel, you can talk a, a couple of words here, this slide. OK. Yeah, so I'll be focusing on um, we've implemented uploading for OpenCast and LTI um, in Sakai. And um, then we've also started using OpenCast Studio. And we have extended our captions and transcript project. So I'll be able to show you some stats on that. Yeah. So thanks. So moving in, here is our pick. So for those that you don't know, is we are a university in Spain near the beach, and we have like something like 23,000 students and 4,000 teachers and staff, basically focusing on engineering education. And, oh, sorry. OK, so I'm, I'm going on. So I'm basically, uh, during the pandemic, we have to change the way we we attend our students so we have been in in opencast uh, recording lectures for for quite a long time so we had in the university we have about 60 lecture rooms and we use uh, the recordings as a supplement to to lectures uh, teachers could record on demand and we had something like 80 hours a week so basically our the change during the pandemic is that the university decided to to have 50 percent attendance so we have half of the students here locally and half of the students remote and the half of students that were remotely could access by live streaming but also recording so recording is not mandatory so we expand our infrastructure to first to 200 open cast lecture like rooms and then now we are about 400 350 now 400 we are continuous um, upgrading the number of rooms that are required for open cast and recording is mandatory so the point of recording is mandatory is that we are doing something like 3500 hours lectures sorry no it's not hours it's lectures a week lectures can be one hour or two hours so it's probably the double of hours and we have done something like 60,000 video recordings this year so at least for us this is a big number and we have quite uh, some doubts that we could do that and basically the point is that we have uh, been able to do that with opencast which has been for us a uh, a great open source product for the task. Uh, apart from the number of recordings, we are not doing anything very fancy. So uh, there are use cases uh, in OpenCast and multi-server installation with Docker. So basically, the installation is, is standard. We use CAS authentication plus LTI, and the students view the recordings via Sakai. They access to Sakai and they got the recordings that are available for them. 
So one thing that was very important in our use case is that the access to one recording is restricted to students actually enroll on that on that course. And since the recording are mandatory, we load the recording from the EPB student information database. So the recording itself are two students full HD video recordings a la opencast style. In one of them, we see the, the blackboard. In the other one, we see the slides. So looking a bit into the, the hardware and the, and the deployment, so we have basically four big servers and well, or ten big servers. So we have the OpenCast core, which is the the dispatcher for OpenCast, which is basically an orchestrator that that uh, distributed the task for encoding, recording, and so on to the to the different servers. We have 32 workers that are the equipment in OpenCast that is devoted to encoding. And then we have three publishing points in which is one, uh, one engage and two WOFA servers on the right. Uh, for all this year, we have used something like 250 terabytes of disk plus copies, which is, is double. And for that, we are we're using uh, we have a, an NF disk, an F, NFS disk of one petabyte. The the policy of, of recording here will be something like eighteen months. So we plan to store the recording for eighteen months. So yeah. So basically, again, what uh, recordings are loaded for the lecture that I was uh, each week. So teachers arrive to the lecture halls. They do their usual lecture as, as if nothing had happened because recordings start and stop automatically. So when the lectures for the day stop, everything gets automatically uploaded to the opencast that got that process all the videos. And then teachers have 40 hour, 48 hours to decide if they want to publish a lecture or not. If they if they do, doesn't say anything, lectures are automatically published. We, depending on the day and the and the load of the system, our global delay since the lecture to the actual publishing for students is something like 40 to 72 hours. And that is all I wanted to say. So basically is that OpenCast in itself can manage safely large volume of recordings. I think once you arrive to, to 2,000 recordings a week, you have to do something, but it's not related to OpenCast. It's more about the, this performance, network performance, and so on. But um, that's, apart from that and the overwhelming support that you have to give to the teachers and, and the students, there's not a big problem. Students love to have the recordings into Sakai, and our idea is to continue for, for next year and to put that into, yes, as, as a standard service from the university for nearly all the teachers. Yeah, and that's all I wanted to say. So I think I can pass the point to Corne, and if you have questions, I, I think we can we can talk afterwards. So, yeah, that's for you. Exactly 10 minutes, uh, hey, Carlos. That's great. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I made you presenter, Corne, so you can uh, oh, okay. share your screens if you want. Right. Let me know if I'm on. So, University of Cape Town, uh, we've got about 17,000 undergraduates. 
almost 10,000 postgraduates and about four or 5,000 teachers and staff. Um, they all interact with Sakai as our primary learning management system and Opencast as the lecture recording video um, presentation system. Um, what we added about two years ago was that you could start uploading videos to your Sakai series. Now, all you do is you link your Sakai series, your course site, to a set of recordings. And then you can start scheduling according to your timetable um, or ad hoc scheduling. And then the upload video, we added the functionality to upload webcams, slides, podcasts, and to optionally decide if you want to caption or do automatic captioning for the recording that you're uploading. Um, these recordings can be published to your current course site or if you are using a My Videos connection. Um, it's just a small configuration change that you can publish to any of your um, existing course sites. Now, the workflow associated with uh, upload uploaded video gets um, various download options, uh, picture and pictures, side by side. Uh, various re resolutions so that students can download them um, and be able to watch the videos at any point or with it, whatever device they would like. Um, and then the lecturer also gets an email on completion of a recording. Upcraft Studio was first developed in 2018 um, and then presented to the Open Cross Summit in 2019 by Duncan Smith. Um, my colleague at UCT, um, that was more of an R&D, like a, 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 a test case scenario. Um, we are very lucky that Ilan um, took up the, the mantle in 2020 and basically produced a production version of it, which was started, which was shipped in OpenCast 8.2. Um, and OpenCast 8 was released in late 2019. So as soon as the pandemic hit, um, we knew that we really wanted to start implementing OpenCast Studio to make it available to our lecturers um, to be able to produce videos in various formats. Um, with OpenCast Studio, you can decide if you just want to capture your screen. You want to capture your screen or your camera or your camera. Um, there are various um, audio issues or audio options that you can choose. So you can choose which microphone and so forth. Um, and then with the production version, there's quality selector. So you can decide which quality you want to record at. And then um, there's a simple video editor so you can pop and tail the recording. Um, and then it uploads directly to OpenCast and gets published. And that workflow also entails uh, automatic captioning and email notification. So you can see it's very um, robust and available on <laughs> lots of um, operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, Android. The Mac and Android do have some limitations on um, multiple devices. So with the Windows uh, in Chrome, and Linux, you can essentially capture your screen and the camera at the same time. Whereas in Safari, you can only capture the screen. And Android, you can only capture the camera. Okay. Then uh, we did have a captioning transcription service um, from about 2019. We extended that to also allow you to edit captions, download your own captions, upload your captions or request better captions. Um, and that the, the better captions option is with way with words. Um, and the Google speech is used for automated captions. So um, a lot faster, but not as accurate as way with words. Um, so what did we see? 
In 2019, we did about 17,000 recordings. Um, or, oh, sorry, 22,000 recordings in total. Um, a lot of that was standard face-to-face -face, uh, teaching in venues. Um, but in 2020, we transitioned to more uploaded videos and open course studio videos. Um, and you can see in 2021, that trend kind of continues. And okay. and then in on the captioning side, um, captioning was introduced in, I think, 2018 or 2019. I think Stephen will be able to correct me on that. Um, and you can see that pretty much 80% of our recordings were captioned and most of that going to Google speech, which would be the automatic captioning um, and way with words would be the requested upgrade of the caption. Um, you can see that in 2019 and 2020, we almost did 7,000 hours of captioning and in um, year to date, we are almost at 2,000 hours of captioning. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yes. Stephen just corrected me. Caption pilot started in 2019 with the single mathematical course. And they massively expanded in 2020. Okay. Um, okay. Opencast, well, the, the sources displayed are um, for Opencast and Opencast Studio, and then I added our script library as well to you for quick deployment of open class to various servers if anyone's interested and then okay okay thank you very interesting um are there any questions please uh, ask them in the shared notes part I have a question for you, uh, uh, Carlos, or maybe Corne. Um, when you start with OpenCast, how do you know how big the, big the servers should be? <laughs> so, no, yeah, basically, we, we didn't know that. Mm, but it's, I think uh, it's, it's, it's not difficult to to reshape the service to, to make it bigger. So basically, there are two components that you can make it they make it bigger. The, the workers, that is the, the ones that actually encode. So uh, these servers can be added on the fly. You don't have to stop the service for, for putting that. So it's easy for you to have more, more power to, to get more recordings. So in that part, you don't have to stop. If you have a lot of recordings, maybe you have to to upgrade the, the admin node, then you have to stop it. But uh, since we are using Docker installations, so it's 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 quite it's quite easy to to move from from one server to another. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think basically, if if somebody want to start with OpenCast, I I think you can start a small with without any any compromise for the for the future i don't know corne if yep so um what we found is that we started with about four servers to do the processing and a single admin presentation node um and our indication that we needed more servers was that the videos were processing longer than um, our expectation was um so a lecture we we try and process a recording in about a day um very similar to carlos's um sla um and then what you'll see is if it takes too long because there's too many videos to process then it starts to encroach on that 24-hour period and then you realize oh i need more servers so that i can process them faster so that i can reach my sla um on starting it out, uh, we have a colleague at hmm, 
sorry. The like uh, Namibian University that contact me in the week. Um, and they're starting with a single open cost server. Um, and they expect to process, I think, 10 or 20 videos a week. Um, and that's their starting point. And that's a single server. Um, so I expect them to grow, hopefully. Um, yeah. But it's easy to start. It's very easy to start. Yeah. But it's wise that you have thought about how you can scale up and, and, and be flexible. Mm. Yeah. Um, Stephen says, Stephen Markard, um, we started a small captioning pilot in 2019 with a single mathematics course, then expanded massively in 2020 for any course. Yes, that's true. I think that's what happened also the last two years <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On a, in a lot of institutions. <laughs> yep. Okay, any other questions? I think it was very clear. There are no questions left. <laughs> Is there anything you want to tell? Because we have some uh, some time. We have uh, eight minutes left. No. Well, I. Um, in comparison, I could say that we are currently running um, one admin and presentation node, two ingest nodes, and eight worker nodes and i think carlos you're running uh 32 I worker nodes yeah i think yeah. four working nodes i think it's but the the tuning as as you said is something like you you got a you add iron when things began to get slow basically yes. so i think it's is the way to to calculate the times also um, is it's also important just to to manage ex expectations of of users because yeah i think everybody would like to have everything very fast but on the other hand they want to be able to review the the lecture so at the end uh, maybe it's not worthy a small improvement in in delivery times for 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 the for the kind of content that we manage, it's depending. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, if if there's any other questions or you yeah, want to start I, I, I think yeah, I think I can ask one question for you, Corne. Hmm. Okay. So you are captioning in in English, but in also in all the fancy languages that you have there in Cape Town or not? Um. We're just doing English captioning at this point. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, our accuracy with Google Speech um, dropped significantly with our um, <laughs> non -native South speakers. African accent. Yeah. Yeah, with okay. non-native speakers. Um, so away with words, we get uh, very high accuracy, um, mm -hmm. and we we haven't rolled out to other languages as of yet, um, simply because. Yeah, Google Speech doesn't really cater for um, a lot of our 11 official languages. Um, and Wayworth Words don't provide that service because they don't have native speakers in those languages. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of a, a bottleneck and a problem at the moment. Um, but we'll see how we can solve that. Um, well, if anyone else wants to ask questions or, well, not now or later on, um, I think feel free to email me or Carlos. Um, yep. We're always open to help and um, if you want to start up your own open class. Maybe a question for uh, the audience, uh, and I think you can raise your hands uh, on the right side below, uh, on the bottom. Um, who of uh, the, the others is working with Opencast? Can you raise your hands? Or say it um, in the shared notes?
So, uh, no, Sifo and Guarne use the <laughs> cast, and Carlos is not. <laughs> well, I, I can read my hand, yes. <laughs> Yeah. So Thank that's uh, that's only a few then. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. If there are no uh, questions anymore, then. Um, uh, thank you, Corne and Carlos, for the very interesting uh, talk, and uh, see you uh, around on the conference. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Bye. bye. <laughs>